Hi there, welcome to a quick primer on interest rates. This is designed for those of you studying monetary policy maybe for the first time. So interest rates clearly are in the news uh, often and uh, one of the mistakes that people make in essays is they, they write about the interest rate. Of course there's no such thing as the interest rate. There are tens of thousands of different interest rates in the economy. And in this short video we're just going to take a look at the, the current data on a selection of key interest rates. So typically most people think about uh, the interest rate set by the Bank of England, the so-called base rate or policy interest rate. The Bank of England, our, our central bank, sets policy interest rates consistent with the need to meet an inflation target of consumer price inflation of 2%. And the base rate of interest shown in this chart is the rate of interest that commercial banks would have to pay if they need to get liquidity or funding from the, from the Bank of England. Now clearly in recent years we've been through a remarkable period, a period of extremely low interest rates by, in historical terms. They were 0.5% from the autumn of 2009 through to the summer of 2016. They're currently at 0.25%, extremely low. So most people think that is the interest rate, of course it's, it's not the case. So the base rate is set by the Bank of England. But let's think about some other key interest rates in the money markets at the moment. So here are some interest rates taken on average for January 2017. The data comes from the Bank of England. So you have, for example, uh, three types of loans shown here on the chart. One is a personal loan. You go to a bank, for example, and ask for a personal loan of £5,000, perhaps to fund some home improvements or a, or a wedding or a major item of spending. And when the bank grants you a loan, it effectively creates the money by accrediting £5,000 in your account. But of course, it'll cost you a rate of interest to, to get the loan. The average interest rate on a personal loan in the UK is 9.5%, just shy of 10%, much higher than the base rate of interest. A credit card uh, paying off your arrears in, in by the end of the month is even more expensive. The average interest rate on a credit card in the UK just under 18%. And a bank overdraft will set you back nearly 20%. An overdraft occurs when money is withdrawn from a bank account and the available balance goes below zero, but the bank has given you the authorization to go below zero, in other words, into the red. But if you do, uh, you pay the interest on the outstanding sum. So hopefully you can see here that, that interest rates on loans, particularly personal loans and credit card debt, is very expensive compared to the base rate. Another key lending rate is the mortgage market. And here are three examples of interest rates in the housing sector. If you want to take out a five-year fixed rate mortgage, in other words, the rate of interest is fixed for five years, it'll, it'll cost you just, just under 2.5%, pretty low. Uh, LTV is the loan to valuation ratio. Quick explanation of that, if let's say you're buying a house for, uh, let's say £300,000, if they were to give you a 50% loan to value, value ratio, then you'd have to uh, find half the money, £150,000, and they, they give you a mortgage of one fifty. So the higher the LTV ratio, the greater is the loan or the mortgage that the lender is willing to, to lend you relative to the price of the house you're buying. So a 75% LTB ratio means they're prepared to give you a mortgage loan worth three quarters of the value of the house. You have to find the deposit uh, to find the other 25%. But hopefully you can see here that interest rates on mortgages are, are pretty low. In fact, they're historically low levels. You can lock yourself into a five-year fixed rate of 1.34% providing you can find 40% of the, the value of the house. The variable rate mortgage goes up and down. It goes up and down with the market from month to month, uh, just under 1.5%. Again, a low rate. But for many people, it's not the interest rate on the loan that's the key. It's the challenge and the struggle to find the money to, to find the deposit for mortgage, given how, how high house prices are. Do you get a picture from this about where interest rates are in the UK? The base rate of interest is 0.25% set by the Bank of England. Loan rates clearly higher than that. Banks need to make a profit. But the rates of interest on overdrafts and credit cards and personal loans are, are pretty high. Um, and of course, loans on payday debt is, is astronomically high. 
So those are the interest rates on loans. Just to look at the other side of the interest rate equation, of course, which is the interest rate on savings accounts. And here, the story is pretty bad news for savers in the British economy. I've just taken four examples of different types of deposit or savings account. And you can see that if you have money in an instant access account, you can withdraw your money without penalty immediately, then you're getting a pretty, pretty pathetic rate of interest, average 0.15% across the, across the market. Now, you can get better rates of interest than that, but you have to really do, have to do a search. Uh, if you want to lock your money in for two years uh, with a cash ISA, uh, you can get 0.77%. Happy days. A cash ISA is an individual savings account. It's basically an account that pays interest tax-free as opposed to a normal bank account where you might pay tax on your savings. Uh, a fixed rate bond, again, is basically locking your money into a, a deposit account. And if you do that for a year, you get 0.6%. If you do it for three years, 1.2%. Either way, I think you'll agree with this chart that the interest rates on savings in nominal terms are pretty dreadful. And millions of people, of course, rely on their savings to fund their spending. Indeed, if you take inflation away from these interest rates to get the real interest rate, in many cases, savers are getting a negative real return on their money. Not good news for savers at the moment. So this has been a quick primer for those of you looking at monetary policy. The key takeaway point, I think, is that there's no such thing as the interest rate. There are tens of thousands of different interest rates, loans, savings, etc. So be careful when you're writing about that in an exam question. Thank you for joining in on this one.